In this video I'm going to show you how to paint realistic in Procreate. I'm now painting Harlem and it's the city I live and work in and here's a fence I'm going to paint in Procreate and it looks a little bit like this. So what I do is I first make some sketches in a sketchbook and also some reference pictures and with these reference pictures and the sketches I've made, I'm doing the uh, entire painting in Procreate. And I start out very roughly, I don't sketch anything and I'm using the Nico Rule brush. You can find that in the artistic set of the brushes in Procreate. And I'm just, you know, filling in some basic shapes because Painting realistic is like sculpting with paint. What I'm doing is I don't look at the details, but I'm looking at the values of the image. So where do the highlights come from? Where are the, the shades? And in the beginning, I just paint very loose and don't pay much attention to details that will come later. And in the beginning, I don't want to zoom in. So I leave the image as small as possible. So because when you're zooming in, you're going to draw details. You can always, you know, use the transform tool to make it a, a little bit bigger or make the entire image smaller so that it could fit in the design of the A2 paper, because I'm working on A2 paper, which is 420 millimeters by, I think, 594 millimeters at 300 DPI. Because this is also a poster that's available on my uh, Red Bubble page, and I'll leave a link in the description box down below. The pot starts to take a little bit more shape and that's because I'm using edges because in the beginning I just did the the broad design and the broad colors laid them out and I just laid out the the broad colors and values and now it's time to refine the piece and when you draw realistic you are sculpting with your paint and I will explain it a little bit more in detail. You have different kinds of edges. You have a hard edge and that's where the difference between values is really hard. And then you have soft edges and they blend a little bit more. And then you also have lost edges and to the right of this pot you see there is a lost edge because something is happening around there but you don't need to paint everything in detail when i'm looking at uh, the reference pictures because i've made several reference pictures and there i'm just looking at the not at the total shape of what I'm drawing, but I'm more squinting with my eyes to see the different values in a color. And I'm just painting this with the values. I'm not really um, concerned about the overall uh, perspective of the piece, because at this moment it is not in the right perspective yet. And I'm going to fix that later. You know, when you paint outside, there's just not one light source, as you might think. Of course, the biggest light source is the sun when you're uh, in daytime. But there are also a lot of other uh, light sources, like um, the radiation of the sun from... Uh, the pavement to this pottery. Um, you can have a reflection of some windows. And, and here the sun is a little bit coming from the left, but from the back. So you have some 
rim lights also on this part and also on the fence I'm going to draw later on and there's just a lot of different things you need to uh, look for if you want to paint realistic and here I'm just refining the shapes It is quite, um, you need to take your time if you want to do this right. Don't think you can, you know, draw realistic within two hours because this image took me around, I think 12.6 hours to make. So I didn't do it in one go. And you know, I'm now uh, drawing in the, the fence and also want to draw in a crow because that is actually the center of or the, the main vocal point of this image will be a crow. So now I'm really roughing in the fence and looking at the ornaments and, you know, how they would work. So I first draw it in uh, with very dark colors and later on I can go over it with some shading. There's also some gold letters in uh, the fence. And now I'm uh, just painting in the background because I want to create a depth of field. And for this one I'm just using the biggest uh, airbrush there is, the soft brush and this is just going to be in the background so it doesn't really matter if you draw this accurately on a separate layer uh, i'm sketching in the crow and what i really like is to have negative space in my drawings the negative space here is the tail of the crow and the left bottom of the pot and there you have a, a negative space and you also have it on the right side a little bit more but this is a good framing for an image and i'm also going to change the the, the fence a little bit more because i want the crow to be the point of interest in this image now i'm just adjusting it and you can do that by uh, using the lasso tool in procreate and you can um, then transform your image and something wasn't right because i just uh, when i started painting this um, image i didn't do a sketch so now i can adjust it because the values and the, the rim light and, and everything seems to be uh, in place. And now I can uh, work on the pot and uh, also where the light is hitting the pot. So this is working with uh, hard and soft edges. So now I'm changing uh, the fence and in real the, the fence isn't that up high but I just drew the fence a little bit more into that shape so that um, it would direct your eye to the crow. And that's just a, a graphical trick you can do. You can do it with clouds or with trees or uh, other things. And now I just used the fence and I drew it a little bit higher up so that um, the curly part of the fence would uh, point to the crow. Here I'm just finishing off um, the crow and just adding some a little bit more details to everything so this is the final piece of 
uh, one of the paintings I'm doing of Look Up Harlem. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And this image you can buy on my Redbubble page. So if you want to support this channel and you'd like this image, you can buy it uh, on Redbubble. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles.